Happy Easter. It is the start of a four day weekend and it starts with Good Friday, doesn't it? And ends with Easter Monday. And then there's the holidays all around it. So is, um, is TV making an effort for this Easter? Let's have a look at Good Friday. I think the answer is mainly not, not really. Just the odd good thing, maybe, if you can call it that. One thing that's happened between Easter and Christmas is finally the launch of the English regions in HD, which is mostly duplicated, obviously, because there's only a few regional variations other than the news. I think one current affairs programme, and they even, have even cut back on that just in time for all these channels to, to launch in HD, mostly duplicating the same BBC One content on them. I think it's called We Are England or something, and then the Super League show goes out across the north, and then there's very little other than that, really. And that's a politics show on a Sunday morning as well. But there's virtually no difference with Good Friday on BBC One. Uh, there was something at 11.15, my, my Easter story or something like that with Sally Phillips that wouldn't normally be on at 11.15am. The afternoon has no film, but they are putting on a film for Easter Sunday and I think possibly Saturday as well. Other than that, you would only know it's a bank holiday really from BBC One by uh, The Weakest Link being on at 7.15 instead of The One Show, which is which has now been put back to 6.30. It's still on because they always have the shorter regional news. Other than that, it is pretty much business as usual. But these uh, Weakest Link episodes with Ramesh Ran Ranangathan, isn't it, are actually being shown because of the holiday sort of thing, or at least being started because of it. Uh, there's also another Easter series as well that you probably wouldn't notice with Jill Halfpenny, who was... Um, Played the um, the nurse that M Martin Platt had an affair with back in the year 2000. Now I can't can't really show it because the program's ended, but it's something like Jill Harper and Penny's Easter Journeys or something like that. And then BBC Two is virtually just the same as well. Other than that, so you can't really see anything on this schedule that really stands out as being a holiday schedule. Um, except that they don't have news night. This this is a new series of pilgrimage. I mean, you're either, either going to find that really dreadfully dull or you're going to enjoy it for the scenery. It's people of different religious faiths having a holiday in Portugal, basically. And then this film at 10 o'clock is only on because of the holiday because they would have news night other than that, wouldn't they? And some comedy there. So, But really, um, there's not that much going on. On, on those main BBC channels there. I do like the ITV Wand, which did used to just have the daytime schedule over, over bank holidays over most of the 2010s. They scrapped it. Seem to have brought back one film for bank holidays now. So they're showing Stuart Little, the second one. Other than that, most of the usual daytime shows are there. And then it goes into an evening that just looks like any other Friday night at that point. But they are showing that for the bank holiday. It's the same on Easter Monday. They're showing, and I can remember this off the top of my head without going there. They, oh, I've just forgotten. Oh, it's Johnny English Reborn, the second one. They're showing that, aren't they? And Easter Sunday has a film as well, and it's Despicable Me 3, whilst BBC One, oh, guess what they're showing? About the 100th showing of The Sound of Music. Which is, there's an interesting fact, when they first got the rights to show this back in the 70s, it cost them £10 million at the time, I think it was, and they were only allowed 10 showings of this film over the next 10 years. So you can imagine that they would only show it around Christmas, if they could only show it 10 times after buying it for £10 million in the 70s. And they still regard it as something special now, because they always show the sound of music typically on new year's day and it often shows up at easter as well last easter 2022 they actually had a showing of disney's the lion king from 1994 on bbc one on easter sunday that is very rare and admittedly that is quite a treat from free television to show that obviously you can get it by subscribing to disney plus um, disney classics like that are not rare anymore in that way like Aladdin, for example, if you wanted to watch that after the cinema, it didn't get released on video for ages. It was it was in the so-called Disney vault. And then it was it was hard to even rent it. So it was very hard to even watch Disney's Aladdin. But now what you've got to do is either get a copy of it from somewhere or buy it on DVD Blu-ray or subscribe to Disney Plus. Channel 4 usually doesn't make much of an effort of bank holidays either, I noticed, but I think there was an extra film today. 
Um, and uh, I'm going to have to, and it's a bit boring for this video, I'm going to have to go back into the Sky Guide just to see what it was. It was the Kid Who Would Be King 1150 because it's over now. But other than that, there's your usual countdown, which is now in, in mid-afternoon. There's your usual place in the sun and then all that usual stuff that they show through tea time there. So there is like one different film. And uh, there's the premiere of a new series with um, television's latest darling, and that is Joe Lysis. He was all over Channel 4 now, isn't he? He's the latest big face because he's had that series called um, Joe Lysit's uh, Got Your Back. And there's a late night Lysit. Lysit is his latest series starting tonight. Channel 5 has actually done something different as well, I think. Um, but not very much. Actually, I say that, and it's not. Jeremy Vine was on as usual, and then a show about dogs. And then this afternoon film, The Lies She Tells, is the usual TV movie um, that they show every day. So really, there's nothing, there's nothing really different, except that they, they do have news on Channel 5, so you wouldn't normally get that, that program there, which is very um, Easter-themed, being about the Cadbury actual chocolate factory, not the Willy Wonka one. That, uh, that still exists in the suburbs of Birmingham. Somewhere near, near Bourneville or somewhere, and the, the actual chocolate bar is named after that as well, isn't it? Um, out and then, and then that there, I don't, I don't know, you might have got that, you might have got those sorts of programs, so really nothing distinguishes it. You notice that Sky One, or as it's now called since 2021, Sky Showcase, does seem to make an effort for bank holidays sometimes. So, you know, they, they have um, specials like that, the Secret Garden uh, being shown there. So this isn't what they would normally show on a weekday. So just to show that, let's go to Tuesday. Let's advance to Tuesday and you'll see that it isn't. I really hate this. No listings available for ages. It says that like it's really slow and sluggish now, showing that all the time. So they're the usual types of shows it has. Showings of Modern Family by 4 o'clock. Um, a bit nondescript. But they're, but actually they have got a bank holiday schedule there. Gold usually resort to, I don't know, something like um, Only Fools and Horses or Carry On films sometimes. That's what ITV3 is showing today instead of the uh, classic soaps. But they've got a back-to-back -back block of all the... Um, all the films that followed Murder on the Blackpool Express, the sequel, which was Death on the Time, that's this one. The third one, which was called Dial M for Middlesbrough, an obvious parody there. And they even get the rights to show Wallace and Gromit, so you can't really fault Gold for this in a way. They actually are showing um, a quite good holiday schedule of archive stuff, and Wallace and Gromit completes that mood, I would say. They've now got the rights to show um, the back episodes of Ghosts as well, which, which actually feels fairly modern still, so that's not bad. Uh, that's a block of World's Most Dangerous Roads, which is probably quite a good choice, because it takes the viewer abroad to some ridiculous road, like roads that snake round. Uh, it's barely cut into the mountain, and once, if you let go of the steering wheel even slightly, you'd be hurtling down the cliff, that sort of thing. Um, and then Comedy Central, I always complain about this, because if you're not into Friends, how annoying is it to, you know, to see it like that so often? And but look, instead of, um, they've now got Austin Powers at 9 o'clock. So, so you can finally get a bit of a break from it. Followed by them sh um, showing um, Beavis and Butthead, which the TV listings guys said they would be show showing the brand new episodes of Beavis and Butthead, the ones that you have to subscribe to get on Paramount Plus, or maybe. And they, they failed to show up on Comedy Central, despite the listings guys saying it was the brand new episodes. It just seems to be the classic ones that are on. So maybe they've decided that it's too much of a draw for Paramount Plus that they're not going to show them on Comedy Central even though it's kind of been made for Comedy Central rather than um, MTV this time around. So it really should premiere on this, but you're probably going to need um, Paramount Plus to see that. So really, yeah, um, the only thing left really that's worth looking at now is um, what BBC 3 and 4 do, and, and, and there's very little 
difference with them. BBC Four is largely an archive channel now, and yet its ratings are doing pretty well. Friday night is music night, as Radio 2 used to say, and they they fill a lot of it with repeats of Top of the Pops, which is pretty good, because they're going through the entire run. They've reached 1994, but they're also starting to show some other episodes of Top of the Pops. Like, the same week in history, I think, from 1990, 1983 there, so that's how, that's what they actually seem to be doing. But really, that, this, this schedule on a Friday night of BBC Four shows to me that that's what a BBC Music Linear channel would look like if they ran one full-time. They basically run it as that on BBC Four every Friday night, and so Good, Good Friday is no difference to it, no variations whatsoever. And BBC Three, I think the showing of that film might be the only variation for, um, for it being Good Friday, so there you go. So that's... Um, a quick review, other than I'm looking at ITV2 and 3 and 4, I forgot to do that. ITV2, all they do is cram it full of films, but at least you can't complain that, that ITV are hardly showing any films. And ITV3 suspend the classic soaps with a big run of carry-on films throughout the day, going to an ordinary schedule in the evening as normal. And ITV4, the blokey channel, can often fill bank holidays like this full of sport. So there you go. I should probably be out somewhere, but who cares? It's easier to go on days that aren't bank holidays and stay in on bank holidays. That's what I like to do. That's why we like to see a good telly schedule. Even though there isn't one.